Hey people, welcome to The Run Test, it's Kieran here, and in this video we're going to be taking a very quick look at this. This is the brand new Garmin Forerunner 955 Solar. Now we haven't had these watches for very long, so we haven't been able to give them a full test. So in this video, what we're going to do is give you a quick whip round what's new, how it compares to the 945, the extra features that have come on board. We've done a quick cut a couple of run tests in it, so we'll give you some first impressions of things like battery life, GPS and heart rate accuracy and those things. But the main thing here you're going to understand is about the design. You get to have a look at the watch, see what's new, and start to decide whether this one needs to be on your list. We will then follow up further down the line with our full multi-tester reviews once we put this properly through its paces to test everything that it can do. So then, let's take a closer look. So let's start with what's new on the design and hardware front then. Well, for a start, you're getting a slightly larger 1.3 inch 260 by 260 pixel transflective color display. That screen is slightly bigger and higher res than the 945, which is 1.2 inches and 240 by 240 pixels. And the 955 also now packs a touch screen that works in tandem with Garmin's familiar five button controls. And at 53 grams, it's also three grams heavier than 945, so ever so slightly a little bit weighty on the wrist. It carries the same water rating at 50 meters. The GPS tracking has been upgraded too. You're now gonna get multi-band GPS, so that's multi-band, multi-satellite system tracking, and that's the same as we've seen on other new recent Garmin models. The 955 Solar, clue is in the name, now packs the same solar charging skills as the Enduro and the Phoenix. And that gives the 955 improved staying power over the 945. And here are the key stats for the 955 Solar then. With GPS only, no music, you'll get 42 hours of GPS tracking or up to 49 hours once that Solar kicks in. All systems GNSS plus multiband with music loss up to 8.5 hours. All systems GNSS plus multiband without music will last up to 20 hours. And you get an extra little two hours bump with Solar for 22 hours. This watch also gets ultra track mode for the first time, and that'll give you 80 hours of tracking, obviously pulsing the GPS systems less frequently, and that will extend up to 110 hours if you get the most out of the solar skills. In smartwatch mode, you can expect 15 days or 20 days, again, once solar kicks in. And when it comes to the battery life stats on the 955, obviously, which doesn't have solar, you're gonna get up to 15 days in smartwatch mode. GPS mode, it will go for up to 10 and a half hours with music, or up to 42 hours without music. And that still tops what you got from the past generation 945. When it comes to the new features, we're talking evolution rather than revolution. What we've got here is a suite of new features, many of them looking at things like training readiness and your recovery, and also giving you information into sort of how and when you should train and how hard, those kind of things. So first up of that, you've got a training readiness score, which is basically gonna let you look each day how ready your body is to benefit from the training that you're about to do by taking into account your sleep, your recovery time, your heart rate variability status, and other metrics to give you an idea of how hard you should go that day. Now, speaking of heart rate variability status, well, Garmin has obviously responded to devices like the Whoop and Aura and the popularity of HRV becoming pretty mainstream, and you will now get HRV tracked overnight while you're sleeping to give you a report in the morning to give you an overall view of how well your body has responded to the stress that you put it under. You're also gonna get a morning report that when you're paired with your smartphone, you'll get things like the day's weather and daily workout suggestions for that day, as well as the information about last night's sleep and heart rate variability. And the report can be customized so you can change the details of what you get in each of the reports, but that's basically just a simple way of looking at all of the data first thing in the morning, maybe whilst you have your coffee to see what the day holds ahead. Now, for many of you out there who like sort of training for fixed races where you've got a date in the diary, you're training for a particular event, Garmin has responded by producing a race widget. Now this will let you view all of your race prep information, including a race day specific performance prediction. It will tell you the race day weather and it will give you a countdown clock to how long it is until race go time. Once a race is scheduled, you'll also get daily suggested workouts that will adapt based on your race plans so yeah, something that will help you kind of target that race day as well. You're also gonna get real-time stamina insights that we saw arrive on some of the earlier Garmin watches rolling up into the 9552. That will let you monitor and track your exertion levels in real time during a run or a bike ride. Now Garmin has also pointed out that you're gonna get native running power, but you're gonna still need to have a running dynamics pod or a HRM Pro chest strap. Both of those are gonna to have to pay extra for 
in order to receive those real-time updates of how much power you're using on a run. So you're still not getting that from the wrist like you do on some other devices like the Polar range. Now, non-streaming music fans will be pleased as well because there's more music storage on the 955 as well. That built-in music can now download up to 2,000 songs from playlists on Spotify, Amazon, and Deezer. Though you'll need a premium subscription probably for those. And that was previously a thousand songs on the 945, so you're going to get more tracks loaded onto your watch for phone-free listening. So in addition to those new features that they've added to this watch, what you're really going to get here with the 955 is a watch that encompasses quite a lot of the other features that you'll get from Garmin watches down the line. So navigation skills are pretty comprehensive with everything kind of from Climb Pro, you know, breadcrumb navigation, turn by turn. Uh, you've got all of those kind of sort of looking forward into the future elevation profiles, all of that stuff around navigation that you had before route planning, it's all going to be here. The same is true for your training and performance insights. So training, recovery and performance all covered off with the same kind of things, training load, you're going to get, you know, recovery recommendations, uh, you know, you're going to get race prediction times, all of those things that you would have gotten before will be here as well as normal. There's women's health tracking that's in here too. Interestingly, you can also put some of those stats from the women's health tracking onto your kind of daily morning update as well, if that is something that you want to do. In terms of safety, you're gonna get live tracking features, you're gonna get group tracking, you're also gonna get internet detection and assistance, which is also available on the 945, so nothing's changed there. Also, pulse oximeter, that's here too. You can get a barometric altimeter, you get the physio kind of true up, and all the advanced heart rate features. Final note then on smartwatch features, you know, contactless payments is here, music is obviously here, I've mentioned that, and the usual kind of suite of kind of getting your notifications on your watch, all of that stuff is also here on this watch as well as you'd expect. When it comes to price, you're going to pay £549.99 in the UK for the Forerunner 955 Solar and £479.99 for the standard Forerunner 955. So then onto the run test bit. Now, massive confession here, really. We've only had this watch for a day or so. So I only had really the chance to take it out for one run. I went out for just shy of an hour in it. And in that time, I tried my best to kind of push the heart rate with lots of different changes of pace, went steady, did a few kind of intervals of fast mile. Also to look at the kind of GPS accuracy, did a lot of twisting and turning around a certain route that I run, which I know the distance on. And yeah, used it overnight to check that kind of HRV but also look at the battery drain for that hour long run and what's drained overnight and in a sort of 24 hour period. So real big caveat here, so early that this isn't really a run test verdict. It's really just what we found in that time. But we thought we'd give you a little window into how this feels. I mean, it's a Garmin watch, has all the hallmarks of a Garmin watch. The design, there's nothing particularly kind of revolutionary here. It looks and feels and wears like a Garmin watch. It's nice and lightweight on the wrist. It's comfortable. I think the screen in terms of its kind of brightness and its clearness and clarity is about the same as I would expect from kind of an Enduro. It's obviously not near something as sharp and bright as the Epics. That is a real treat if you get hold of that. Um, but yeah, pretty much standard performance for me in terms of visibility when I was running with it out there. All the colors and all of that is about the same. You've got a nice sort of reasonable size of screen. So the real estate is there for showing lots of stats nice and easily. Again, you know, nothing majorly new here. Bit, bit of extra kind of display space, but you know, there is a, in certain screens, there's a lot more stats to kind of pop in there, um, particularly with some of the reports, the morning reports that you get. But yeah, overall, I'm kind of happy with that, what I've seen with it so far. Nothing sort of stand out to report. Buttons responsive. The touch screen to me feels nice and responsive as well. That's one thing. I'm not a big fan of touch screens on watches. I tend to just use the buttons anyway, and I would probably lock the touch screen or switch it off. But when I have used it outside of the runs and stuff, it's been you know, really nice and responsive, it scrolls easily, sort of taps and responds, so that's all good. So then moving swiftly onto the battery life performance then. Now for that one hour run that I did, I went with a kind of full top multi-band, multi-GNS, all singing, all dancing, uh, kind of power drain to see what it did. And for a one hour run, it was about a 4% battery drain. Overnight, I saw a further 2% battery drain, which is pretty low really when you compare it to some of the watches. Polars tend to drain much faster than that. Considering what it's doing, kind of all taking all the readings overnight, that's a really good performance, really happy with that, losing that kind of level overnight. You wouldn't want to see it losing more. And then with a the whole day's usage, so there's that one hour run overnight and then a bit of general wear and using it as well. Obviously, we're using the screen quite a lot to film and what have you. So I've been lighting up the backlight quite a lot. I'm down to 91%, so about 10% in a 24-hour period with an hour-long run. So if that were to continue then, you'd be looking at kind of like a 10-day sort of charging cycle 
with 10 days with a single hour run every day, that's not too bad. But obviously when we do the full review, we'll put that to the, fully to the test to see just how long it lasts. When I went out and tested the optical heart rate accuracy, I did it actually up against the Enduro's optical heart rate just to see how those two compared. One thing I noticed was that the 4955, it took a lot longer for the heart rate to settle down. It was quite high quite early and it stayed there I think almost for around about a mile, which is quite a long time. Whereas the Enduro, it kind of caught that kind of on-ramp of the heart rate much, much better. It didn't shoot up, there was no spike. But then I guess later on into the run, after I'd done some intervals, they kind of matched beat for beat. They both kind of picked up the surges in effort and intensity in line with what how I kind of felt, my kind of own idea of, of what the heart rate ought to be. The only other thing I did notice though, was that the 40955 dropped much quicker in terms of the recovery segments of that than the Enduro. Which one is right? I don't know. I mean, I, I felt like really probably it was the Enduro with a bit slower. I was puffing a bit. So yeah, but again, we'll test all of this more fully when we do the full review, put it up against chest traps and all of that stuff. In terms of GPS accuracy, I found that the 955 tracked overall a little bit less than the Enduro did. That did affect some of the real-time pacing, but it was kind of within the window, sort of that 10% margin for error that can happen when you're testing watches, even if you're testing them at the same time, you've got them on different wrists and they can be picking up different signals. So I think early signs of the GPS performance were fine, but again, all of this needs to be interrogated much more deeply when we do our full review. It's obviously way too early to comment on any of the other things like the accuracy of the kind of the training load and the recovery recommendations, the VO2 max, and also things like the HRV tests. You know, I haven't even set the benchmark on this yet because there's not been enough time for testing it, but we will be putting that up against Aura and against the HRV for training app just to see whether or not it tracks the kind of same trajectory as those devices, uh, any kind of anomalies in that. That will all be to come in the full review. If you want to get that full review, do one thing, hit subscribe, ring the bell and you'll get notified when that full review comes up on the channel. It will be a doozy. We're going to have a multi-tester review because we've all got these watches and we will be telling you exactly what we found them with probably the most thorough review test that you'll find on the internet. That's our promise to you guys. So I've just done a 10K run in the Garmin 955 now, and I think first impressions are very good. It feels like a very solid watch. It looks really nice. The screen looks quite clear, so you can see all of the data and stuff that's on the screen whilst you're running. Um, the strap and the overall watch feels very comfortable, so all good from that perspective. And yeah, I think it's just a very promising solid watch so far from what I've seen from it on that run. When it comes to the new features, I think the touchscreen is really good. I found it to be very responsive. I uh, didn't have any issues with it at all. Sometimes when I test touchscreen watches, the there's a bit of lag, it's not that good. This seems very good straight from the off. It's very uh, responsive when you're trying to use it. Um, and yeah, very happy with the touchscreen. Think it's a nice addition to the watch. Probably wouldn't use it that much, but it's definitely one of the better touchscreens that I've used in recent months. There's a lot of features on the watch which I'm quite excited about after playing around with it. The biggest one for me is the race widget. So this is where you set a race that you're doing based on the calendar date when you're doing it and the distance. And the watch will modify the training advice that it gives you working towards that race. And that's something that I've had an issue with in previous uh, Garmin watches. I don't tend to use Garmin's training advice very much because I think I'm probably at a level that's beyond that training advice being useful. It always seems to be a little bit off or I generally know what training I should be doing uh, instead of the advice that Garmin has given me. I think it's a very good feature previously for people who probably don't have a good idea of how they should be training. So it's it's useful to give some sort of guidance as to the sort of training that people should be doing. Um, but with this new race widget, which actually focuses the training based on the race that you you have coming up. I think that's a really nice feature. I'm hoping that that's gonna be really useful um, as I test over the next few weeks. I also like the addition of the morning report, which is a, as you can probably guess, a report you get in the morning that gives you a early update on the sort of training and position you are in, in terms of your physical readiness for the day. I think that's a nice feature to have. Um, I've seen a similar scenario in a lot of watches, but it's definitely focusing on that readiness for the day and setting you up so that you can train harder. But it, the other thing that it uses is a HRV, um, heart rate variability, over 
you're sleeping in the night so it can give you a little bit of a better indication of how ready you are based on that information overnight which i think is a really good factor and it just shows to show that garmin is thinking more and more about using stats that it's probably had accessible to a point but it's really using those stats cleverly to um, give you information on how you should be training and, and what point you are uh, ready for that training. Solar charging, this is the 955 Solar. Again, live in the UK, um, I've been out in the sun today and it's not really had much of an impact on the charging of it. It's been a little bit cloudy, a little bit sunny, so I don't think it's gonna be a major plus point for the watch for people that probably don't live in a equatorial country, um, but it's a nice feature to have. Uh, if you're going out for a lot of training miles and you really just want to have a little bit of a bump um, to your battery life. Yeah, so overall, pretty pleased with it so far. Quite looking forward to testing it out. I never, I've never, i never actually tested out the 945, so I'm coming fresh at the 955 without prior knowledge of the previous watch. So I'm really comparing it to the Phoenix 6 uh, Pro. And the difference between it and the Phoenix 6 Pro Pro is quite noticeable. It really looks a lot cleaner, a lot fresher. The screen looks a lot more visible. Um, and yeah, I think it's just a fantastic um, looking watch so far. So looking forward to testing it some more. So I've been testing out the 955 Solar for a couple of days now, and I've been able to get out for a couple of runs with it to look at the GPS and heart rate accuracy, but I haven't been able to connect it to Garmin Connects. I haven't been able to test out things like the training readiness or training status stuff as yet. Uh, the design, I think, does feel a bit bigger and thicker on the wrist compared to the Forerunner 945, but it's still a very lightweight, comfortable watch to wear, that's for sure. And the bigger screen, I think, is welcome, especially if you're someone like me who shows kind of five or six running stats at once uh, when you're on the go. So I've done two runs with the watch. The first was a little strange. The battery performance was very odd. There's some wonky GPS. So I kind of wrote that off, reset the watch, started again today, and did a watch comparing it directly to the 945. Uh, and generally, yeah, you do see those kind of minor GPS improvements from the multiband tracking on the 955. Like it's things like when you go around, if you do an about turn on a road, it tracks it very neatly instead of kind of being a bit of a zigzag, which is what you get on the 945. And, you know, the 95 will cut off a few more corners. And over the course of a run, that will all add up. I've been wearing the FX2 for the last few months, and I do see, you know, a clear improvement with multiband GPS, but it's most of the time it's pretty minor and something that's not really going to affect you. But on faster runs in particular, when you're using it to pace stuff, uh, then the multiband is a nice little bonus to have. And I'm glad it's now being available on cheaper watches in Garmin's range, like the 955 and indeed the 255. Oh, on the heart rate tracking, it's not been, you know, that great. Uh, it's been, you know, read a little bit wrong for most of one run. And like when I did some strides at the end of a run, it missed the kind of ups and downs. It's, again, the kind of thing where you probably are going to want a chest strap, but we'll do a lot more testing on that. With all the kind of training readiness and, you know, training status stuff on this watch, you are going to want accurate heart rate data being fed into it during your activities for sure. I did one night of sleep with it as well. And it did the kind of classic Garmin thing of slightly overestimating how long I slept compared to uh, the Aura Ring, which I do find a very accurate sleep tracker. I think Garmin is planning an update to hopefully improve sleep tracking so that'll be quite a big deal because you know I did look at my heart rate variability graph on the watch as well and that was pretty impressive actually uh, quite closely lined up with what Aura had measured that night but all that stuff's going to need to be on point for the readiness stat in particular to have you know to be really useful to people who are using it to gauge their training efforts so yeah the updates here i've brought it into line with the phoenix 7 and epix 2 watches in terms of features and this is actually a much cheaper watch in garmin's range to get the best of all the features when you think about it actually the multi-band tracking for example was only available on the sapphire editions of the phoenix 7 and epix which you know very expensive kind of 800 you know quid plus and this is coming in especially the non-solar version of the watch is coming in a lot cheaper at 480 pounds i think that's a you know pretty good price for what you're getting here which is really very much the best of garmin in this kind of slightly lighter maybe less premium plastic frame but it's uh yeah it's a really interesting watch I'm looking forward to doing lots of testing testing out the readiness and all that but yeah i think the big plus point here is that the price has actually come down from the 945 for the standard edition of the watch and then there is that option to pay a bit more and get a bit more battery life from the solar edition so there you have it that is our first look at the new garmin forerunner 955 solar as i said we'll have a big long in-depth review coming up on the channel soon we'll also do some big comparisons against some of garmin's other leading watches and other brands of course so watch out for those head-to-heads as well. We hope this has been useful for you. If you have any questions that you want us to answer in the full review all right now, hit them in the comments below and we'll endeavour to answer those. As I said, don't forget to like and subscribe, ring the bell, do all that kind of stuff to get notified when more content about this watch comes up on the channel. It's been a pleasure to talk to you about it and we hope to see you again soon on the run test.